Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I'm going to do my skincare routine update for you guys for winter 2019. Now, I've been doing these skincare routines on YouTube for about six years now, and so I do them once or twice a year, so there's anywhere between like six and 12 of them out on YouTube floating around. I feel like because I don't change up products a lot that they get a little bit redundant, so I thought we would try something new this year. I will just go through my entire day with you, show you how I apply everything right up here in my bathroom. I wanted to know what you guys wanted to know, so I put up a post on Instagram the other day. So I asked for questions, which, oh my gosh, it certainly did open up a Pandora's box. So I'm armed with your questions about what you wanted to know, exactly what steps you want to see. A lot of people wanted to know how I work in my skincare routine uh, two days that I work out. You know, what do I put on? Am I wasting products? If I put it on, then work out, then wash my face. So I'm going to show you how I do it. A lot of people wanted to see my entire new face routine. So I think we're going to try to do that in here. So we have a lot to cover. The basics about me are that I'm 56 years old. I didn't start looking into skincare seriously until I turned 50. And of course, being a child of the 70s, I had done a ton of sun damage. There really wasn't sunscreen beyond an SPF of four back then. So I wanted to figure out what were the active ingredients in skincare that could actually make a difference in my skin, that could actually turn back the hands of time a little bit. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a skincare expert or a chemist. I'm just an average user of skincare like you, but I do love to do research. So what I found out was that there are only a handful of ingredients that actually work and that they don't have to be expensive. So my skincare routine is based around buying the best ingredients that I can get at a reasonable price, but also making sure that they're well formulated so they're actually gonna work in my skin. So let's start in with my day. It is first thing in the morning here, just got up. Of course, I brush my teeth um, and I am going to do a workout now. I work out at home. I don't wash my face before I work out. I have washed my face the night before. All I need to do my workout is a little bit of sunscreen. So the sunscreens that I usually use when I do my workout are a powder sunscreen. I want to be sure to use something that is not water resistant because I'm going to wash my face right after and that's when I'm going to do my skincare routine. So the sunscreens that I like to use are the powder mineral sunscreens. My two faves are are Color Science Sun Forgettable and Derma E Essentials Sun Protection Powder. This one's an SPF 30, this one's an SPF 50. This one's way less expensive and they could be used interchangeably. You wrap it to get the powder into the brush. These each woo, come with their own little brush to apply it with and then I just apply the sunscreen all over my face. You do need quite a bit of this to get the same coverage as when you're using a liquid, so you have to be sure to apply you know, a pretty decent coat. The other thing is you don't want to breathe in when you're putting this on because breathing in titanium dioxide is not that good for you. I just kind of rub them in to make sure that they're everywhere and rubbed in. Make sure that you do your ears and down your neck. I have finished my workout and now it's time to start the skincare routine. So to wash my face, I use CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. I use this because it is oil-free and since I'm gonna do my new face routine as my next step, the only thing that keeps the electrical microcurrent from conducting is oil. So I wanna make sure that I have an oil-free face wash for this step. So CeraVe fits the bill. It's from the drugstore. It is inexpensive. It's moisturizing. It's soap-free. This contains glycerin, ceramides, and hyaluronic acid all really nice moisturizing ingredients. My skin is combo, but it does tend to be a little dry around the edges, around my mouth, around my hairline. This one does have parabens in it though, so if you're looking for a paraben-free alternative at the exact same price point is the La Roche-Posay Tolerane Gentle Cleanser, and this has a lot of the same ingredients, like a pump of it in the palm of my hand and then I just smear it all over my face. I can rub it right on my eyes, then I can open my eyes and there's no stinging and burning. I find that with the uh, La Roche-Posay, if I try to open my eyes, they do burn a little bit. So that's why I just prefer the CeraVe. So I don't splash it with water first. This helps the moisturizers in here to break up the sunscreen. And then I'm just gonna turn around and rinse right behind me. If you have dry skin, hot water will um, strip the oils from your skin. So just lukewarm water. Then to really make sure that I have the sunscreen off my face, I'll usually just give it a quick wipe with my Wonder Cloth. This is like an exfoliating washcloth that, you know, I picked these up cheap. Uh, you could use a regular washcloth, but I find a regular washcloth is a little too harsh for my skin. As you can see, there was still a little bit of sunscreen on there and I wanna make sure that I don't have any of that left on my skin 
because I don't want it to interfere with the microcurrent from the new face. If you are not interested in new face, you're never going to use one, you can skip ahead. I'll put a time code right here to where to skip ahead to. But if you are interested in the new face, this is a microcurrent device. I use this every day or every other day once I'm past the break in period. So just about anything will conduct the electricity. My favorite gel to use with it is the new face gel primer. This is hugely expensive. So I've been looking for an alternative to this. But something I just started using is Neutrogena Hydro Boost body lotion. This is the fragrance-free version and this actually is great because it doesn't contain oil. It's got a lot of hyaluronic acid in it and that's a great conductor for the gel. So this is what I've been using. So I have this old paddle brush for foundation. I just put a squirt of that on the paddle brush and then I paint it over my face and I bring it all the way down my neck. This doesn't irritate my skin at all. Neither does the New Face primer gel. This time I'll go ahead and use the new face gel. I'll do the full lower face routine with the big balls. Then I'll go ahead and take these off and put this on and then do the full upper routine. When I do my entire new face routine, it takes about 20 minutes. Um, I've tried a lot of gadgets, and this is pretty much the only one that I have ever stuck with over time. All right, now we're done with the new face. I put it back in the cradle for the night. I'm gonna hop in the shower, because of course I did work out, and I'm all sweaty. I'm not gonna wash my face again when I get in the shower, so I'm gonna wash from here down. This, I'm just gonna do a water rinse, just to get you know, the thickness of it off the surface, and that way my skin is ready to absorb my skincare that's coming up next. All right, you guys, I am fresh out of the shower, and now I'm gonna go in with my first serum. This is my favorite vitamin C serum, five or six drops of it on the my fingers, I have to hold them really tight together so it doesn't run through, and then immediately apply it to my face. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply my entire skincare routine, and then I'm gonna talk about the products after so that um, we can do this in real time. I do put this underneath my eyes. I don't put it on my eyelids. Put it on my upper lip and down my neck, and then I will grab a little bit more put it on your chest and also on the backs of your hands. Next, I use a lactic acid serum, the Ordinary 5% lactic acid, four or five drops of that. This one I put on my face, chest, backs of hands. My neck is too sensitive to use an alpha hydroxy acid on it. I do put it under my eyes though. All of these have hyaluronic acid in them as well, so they're already starting to moisturize my skin. The third serum I use is from Timeless. This is their Coenzyme Q10 serum. Seven or eight drops of that. Now this is the first one I'm gonna put on my eyes, on my lips, neck, chest, backs of hands. And I'm just gonna rub this in. As you can see, I'm not waiting between products. I wanna get it on fast to lock in the moisture. This one also contains Matrixyl 3000 in addition to the coenzyme Q10, so it's got a peptide and an antioxidant. Fourth step is to seal all that in with a good moisturizer. This is CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. So three pumps of that. Again, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, backs of hands. That was the quickest part of my skincare routine, was it not? This is usually when I will go ahead and moisturize my body. I use the Alpha Skincare Renewal Lotion. This is a 12% glycolic acid lotion. And or, probably alternating days, I use Olay Quench. Uh, this I use because it has a big dose of niacinamide in it. It has glycerin. Let me get my sunscreen on. I do my sunscreen every day. Currently, I'm using a combination of two. These are tinted, and one's too dark for me, one's too light for me, so I mix them together. I use all mineral sunscreen. That way I can put it right up under my eyes, on my eyelids. I don't get any irritation or stinging, and I feel like these are the best of the mineral sunscreens. I use three pumps of the Elta MD UV elements, and then I use the equivalent of one pump of the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle 
defense. So I just mix those up here on my fingertips. You'll notice that I have a lot of sunscreen. It takes about a quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen to cover your face and your neck to get the SPF on the label. If you're putting on one pump, you are cutting the SPF down to about an SPF seven and a half. Every single day, the sun is coming inside your house, through your car windows, it's with you everywhere you are. So I really wouldn't embark on an anti-aging skincare routine without also committing to sunscreen. So sunscreen needs to set up for 15 to 20 minutes to set and form the film on your face so that it can protect you. So it needs 15 to 20 minutes of time undisturbed, which means you're not putting on your makeup yet and you're not putting other skincare over it. So we're gonna take that time to talk about the things that I slapped on here really quickly. The first thing that I put on was my vitamin C serum. I showed you the Timeless C plus E plus ferulic acid serum. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. What antioxidants antioxidants do is they help to fight free radicals in your skin. Free radicals are produced from sunlight and from pollution. They run around in our skin, breaking down the scaffolding that makes our skin plump and firm. And so it's really important to use these. So they have to be formulated correctly though. They have to be at the right pH to be able to get into your skin. And this one is, and it also has the other two helper antioxidants in it. So that's why I love this one. There is this one from Maylove called the Glow Maker. And I do have discount codes on both of these. I have $5 off at Timeless. This is only a $24.95 item anyway then you take the five dollars off and it's 20 bucks. Um, I have 10% discount code on Maylove so this one is a $28 item anyway so 10% off of that plus free shipping you're golden. If your vitamin C is this color that means it's oxidized and I would not use it on your skin. Now when it is somewhere between clear and that color it's still okay to use it it's just the efficacy is decreasing at every level of brownness that it gets. So I would only use it until it was a very, very pale yellow. After that, I would toss it. The other thing that I do is I split it into two smaller bottles. I'll also put links to these in the info box as well. They're also in my Amazon shop. When I get a new vitamin C serum in, hi kitty. As soon as I get a new one in, I split it into the two bottles. I keep one in the fridge and then the other one that goes in my medicine cabinet and I use it every day. That way I get about five months out of the vitamin C serum, whereas otherwise it generally oxidizes in about three months time and then I have to buy a new one, which is why, which is why I don't like to spend a lot of money on them. Then the second product that I use is another acid. This one from The Ordinary. It's their 5% lactic acid and what alpha hydroxy acids will do for your skin is that they exfoliate they release the glue that holds the dead skin onto the surface and so getting a lot of those dead skin cells off the surface helps to make our skin look more glowy and more youthful since they do thin out that dead layer of skin you do need sunscreen with it then the third thing i put on is my coenzyme q10 serum this is from timeless as well coenzyme q10 is another antioxidant it also provides energy for your cells. This one also has Matrixyl 3000 in it and that's a peptide. All right, and then the fourth step was the moisturizer that goes over the top. If you have super oily skin, you might skip this. If you have super dry skin, you definitely need this. Um, the one I use is the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. This contains glycerin, niacinamide, ceramides. It also has hyaluronic acid. And niacinamide is a really great ingredient for using in your skincare. There is a ton of um, clinical data on it showing that it is brightening to the skin and that it um, helps to reduce wrinkles and make the skin look better. All right, you guys, so I went and I put on my makeup and I just wanted to answer some more of your questions that you had from Instagram. Um, a lot of them were about the proper order to put things on, what you can mix with other things. Uh, you know, I know that there are a lot of conflicting opinions on YouTube, on Instagram, everywhere you look, in magazines. If you talk to one dermatologist versus another dermatologist, they might tell you different things. So what that says to me is that there is no 100% consensus of the perfect right way to do things. And I think, you know, we're all so overwhelmed and so confused about it that we're looking for a 
solid list that says do it this way and that's right. And unfortunately, there just isn't one. The general rule of thumb as far as the order to apply things is from lightest consistency to heaviest consistency. So things that are thin and watery would go on first and things that are thick and creamy would go on last. Now where there are exceptions to those rules are where you have your most important active ingredient. So like in my nighttime skincare routine, my most important active ingredient is my Retin-A and that comes in a cream and a pretty thick cream. But I put that on first because I want it to be the most fully absorbed. So in that case, I switch things up a little bit. Then, as you saw earlier, I use vitamin C and alpha hydroxy acids and peptides and niacinamide together. And I have gotten questions about, should I use niacinamide and vitamin C? Should I use peptides and acids? I've heard that you can't use those together. I have never seen any of that backed up with any scientific literature. I think the niacinamide vitamin C thing started with a single blog post and it was like the shot that was heard around the world and everybody just repeated it. Anyway, I've seen just as many articles saying that you can use vitamin C with niacinamide that say that you can't. So for me, I'm like, is it even an issue? I don't think so. I'm going to keep using it. Then there's acids with peptides, with just, which just became a thing. Peptides are like long chains of amino acids. And you know, the theory is that the acidic environment will break those links. And you know what? It might. Then again, it might not. I mean, they don't have anything that says like, absolutely, absolutely, this is going to happen. Anyway, I just say, take it all with a grain of salt. There isn't any 100% right way or 100% wrong way to do anything. All right, you guys, it's the end of the night. It's time to remove the makeup and do the evening skincare routine. So I do a double cleanse at night. And so the first step I use Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. This is an oil-based product and it removes makeup really well. So I just take that and I rub it on dry skin and I find that it works best if you don't wet your skin beforehand. Then I just rub it into my eyes, my eyelashes. Of course, I go down my neck because I always have makeup down my neck. And I like to get it up on the undersides of my eyelashes and that really helps to break up the mascara and any uh, tight lining waterproof eyeliner that I've got on there. That's going to make a big mess and I'm going to have big black smears all over, but that's okay because guess what? It's going to all have run down the drain. Oh my gosh, that looks scary. I can open my eyes while I'm using it and it doesn't hurt my eyes. So it mixes with the water and the makeup just rinses right away. Then I use my wonder cloth to wipe off the rest of the makeup. And this is also an exfoliating step. So you can see lots of makeup there. And then the nice thing about the Wonder Cloth is that you just rinse it out when you're finished and all the makeup just runs right out. And then I'll just hang that up and it'll be good to go tomorrow. For the second cleanse of the double cleanse, I will usually use the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser again or the La Roche-Posay. But in the winter, I tend to switch it up and switch to the Mad Hippie Cream Cleanser. And I use this because this has some oils in it and it's much more moisturizing of a cleanser than those guys are, even those are pretty moisturizing. But um, this I wouldn't use in the morning just because it does have those oils, which may remain on your skin, and then it will interfere with the new face. So then I just take this and do the same thing. Pretty much just rub it into dry skin. I use my Tau Aura Orbital Cleansing Brush. So I just take this, put a little water on it. This brush is super gentle and it just helps me to remove the rest of my makeup. So it has a two minute cycle, which I don't use the whole cycle. I just do a quick scrub, get my eyebrows because I did have the um, sunscreen in my eyebrows, want to remove that. This is really the reason that I love this and that I don't use a Clairsonic because I found that the Clairsonic was contributing to my acne. So this just sits in, it, in its base which has a blue light and it keeps the brush sanitary so you don't end up with uh, bacteria on your face that can cause acne. So then we'll just give this a rinse and then I'm just going to pat my face dry. Then the next step is my toner. If you're looking to eliminate steps, I would say toner is one that you can eliminate. It's not 100% necessary. I used to use a witch hazel toner, and when I ran out of that, I had gotten this Colleen Rothschild matcha tea treatment toner in PR and started using this, and I really, really like it. So instead of putting it on a cotton round, I just dribble some in my hands, and then I just rub it on my face. You can think of it as like an essence. I really like green tea. 
Uh, it's an antioxidant. It's really good to have in your skincare. So then right after that, I go ahead and put on my Retin-A. This is the Retin-A that I'm using currently. It's my Curology, my prescription Retin-A, and this is has a combination of tretinoin, azaleic acid, and clindamycin because I still was having some acne and the clindamycin helps with my acne. So I just take one pump of that and I just dot it around my face. And I just put the Curology on my face only because it does have the clindamycin in it and I don't really need that acne fighting medication on you know, my chest or the backs of my hands. I did put it up under my eyes, but that's because my skin is acclimated to it, but I didn't put it on my eyelids. I didn't put it on my lips. Now I do have an old prescription Retin-A, still a little bit left over. This was the one that I had gotten from my dermatologist last time. This is the 0.1%. And this is what I use on my chest and the backs of my hands. So I just take out a little pea-sized amount of that and I Spread that around here, put some on the backs of my hands. Of course, all your anti-aging actives should go in all of these places because they all age and show the signs of aging as well. Then I take the retinol that I'm gonna be using on my neck. In this case, it's the Aven Retinol. This is an over-the-counter retinol, but it's a step up from standard over-the-counter retinol. This is made from retinaldehyde. The way retinols work is that they have to be converted by your skin into all trans retinoic acid. And with over-the-counter retinol, it has to go through a two-step conversion. And with retinaldehyde, it only has to go through a one-step conversion. So it's a little bit closer. This is a little bit more of a chance that your skin is actually gonna use it and turn it into all trans retinoic acid, which is what Retin-A, the prescription version, already is. So that's the one I use on my neck. Then right after that, I put on my first serum. So this is a case where I'm switching out the order. I'm putting on thicker things before thinner things. Next, I put on my Timeless Matrixyl Synth 6. This is a peptide. It is moisturizing and it's also supposed to work on six different signs of aging. So I just put four or five drops of that in my fingertips, rub them together, and just apply this all over my face. Now this will go everywhere. So this I smear onto my eyelids, onto my lips, down my neck, and chest, and backs of hands. And then I go in for my winter, more heavyweight moisturizer. For that, I have my Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream. This is the fragrance-free version. I take a big gloober of it on the back of my finger, that I'm going to rub all over my face. Lips, eyes, neck, chest, backs of hands. I like doing this because then I feel like I get the smear of the Retin-A from the rest of my face onto my eyelids. And this contains niacinamide and a peptide and hyaluronic acid. The next thing I use is La Roche-Posay Cicoplast Balm B5. This is for my neck because this is a really soothing moisturizer. If you have really dry skin that's really irritated, I recommend this. The only problem with it is that it's in such a tiny tube that it runs out so ridiculously fast. And this is like diaper cream. Um, this has zinc in it and it has a B5, which is panthenol. Just put it on the dry areas of my face. Put it up here where I tend to have a little bit of dry flakiness around my hairline. It is pretty greasy, so I wouldn't recommend it for day use. Then some other products that I would recommend for people with super dry skin to help to lock in the moisture are the CeraVe Skin Renewing Gel Oil. This is a really nice one. I like this one because it does have the ceramides and those are fatty lipids that help to strengthen the moisture barrier in your skin. So ceramides are really great to put on and especially if you could get them on there like twice a day, it's really good. So this does contain ceramides. I'm not really a big fan of facial oils per se because I find that they tend to make my other things ball and pill. And it's nice because it's got oil in it, but it's a gel and so it doesn't tend to make my other things ball up. It's really occlusive and that is gonna keep the moisture from evaporating out of my skin all night. I do grow my eyebrows and my eyelashes for the brows. I like Babe Lash. I don't love it for the lashes. For the lashes, I prefer Revitalash. 
One swipe of Revital Lash along the lashes, one swipe of Babe Lash in the brows. And that keeps the face fur growing where I want it. Then the last step in the skincare routine is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. And I like the grapefruit flavor. Butter up my lips for the night. A less expensive alternative for the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask is just good old Aquaphor. This is great for your lips during the night, very occlusive. You can also use this on your neck or on your face if your skin is irritated. So I'm gonna link a bunch of videos um, up here and below. There will be how to get started with Retin-A without irritation. That's an important one to watch. I'll also show you my five year before and after pictures with Retin-A. So basically Retin-A is the gold standard of anti-aging. That's why you wanna use it. It's the one ingredient that has the most um, science and clinical research and study to back up that it works. I used to get it by prescription from my doctor and when I could get my insurance company to cover it, it was very, very affordable to do it that way. Unfortunately, they stopped covering it. If you do want to go the prescription route and it is expensive, you can also try a good RX coupon. But I found that Curology was another good way to go. And if you want to try it, your first month is free. And there's a link in the information box below to that as well. So that's my entire skincare routine for this year. I know, I hope this video didn't go on for five hours. So anyway, if you found the video helpful and informative, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time and really appreciate you watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.